So, how did I get into prepping? And uh, anyway, I subscribed to the Military Arms channel, and he did a video about what started the obsession or something like that. The title of the video, I didn't click on it. it was, uh, I'm gonna save that for a later later day. It's time. I'm gonna assume that he was talking about how why he started making videos or why he got into the military style arms. So I say, well, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna do something similar. Do something similar. And why did I get into prepping? It is. It's a long story. 49 years old. And the millennials, these the kids these days will not understand hardly any of this. Is that during the 1970s that we used to have duck and cover drills. Duck and cover commercials on TV. That if you saw a mushroom cloud, what were you supposed to do? It's during the Cold War. Right, guys? A lot of you older 40s and above, 60s, 70s, 50s, y'all remember this stuff. Y'all remember the Cold War. Remember the Berlin Wall coming down. Remember the collapse of the Soviet Union. But before the collapse of the Soviet Union, I remember my first or second grade teacher in elementary school. She, right after class started, right after school started, she was up in front of the class and she was giving a speech about what to do if we saw an explosion like a mushroom nuclear bomb. And she, she said <laughs> things like, do not look at the blast. The radiation will blind you and the flying glass from the windows will go into your eyes, so do not look at it. Duck under your desk, cover your head. I mean, that was that kind of stuff. That's what second graders were exposed to. That was the kind of stuff that we were taught in first, second grade, third grade, back in the 70s. And I'm sure the people in the 60s were taught the same thing. And also, whenever I was growing up, whenever I was a young man and a child, so my grandparents had chickens, had a milk cow, uh, collected eggs. I remember a lady that lived with my granny going out in the chicken yard with a hatchet, chopped the head off the chicken, and an hour later we had fried chicken, mashed potatoes or biscuits or something. Made their own biscuits out of flour. So it was a combination of growing up in the Cold War era, towards the end of the Cold War anyway, and experiencing life on a farm. Then, I moved, then my parents moved to South Bridge City, Texas. Grew up around Beaumont, Port Arthur, Lake Charles area. I just didn't care for it. Did not care for the city hustle and bustle. Just going from a small town to the hustle and bustle of a small of the city. Then I moved to Conroe or Lake Conroe for a little while, just north of Houston. I'm like, this is terrible. This is not how I want to live my life. And so, even as I even as I was growing up as a young adult, that part of that. Cold War mentality stays with you to have food stockpiled, to have ammunition stockpiled, to have an evacuation plan, duck and cover, all that. So it kind of sticks with you. In the 1990s, I got way off into conspiracy theory stuff. That's why I don't talk about conspiracy theory stuff on the forum or on here. Hey, Buster. I just, uh, I find, I got so far off into conspiracy theory stuff that I felt like it was consuming my life. As I've focused so much on the United Nations and doing whatever 1990s, whenever Bill Clinton was president and we're prepping for the United, Na uh, United Nations invasion of the United States and I mean it just it was just too much. So I started got away from the conspiracy theory stuff, got focused back on prepping. So I've always been from the early age of the Cold War experience, duck and cover drills, experience to seeing my where my dad grew up at on a small farm. My granny with her chickens and turkeys and guineas and eggs and cow, milk cow and horse and not a milk horse. They had a horse. Anyway, that's the kind of life that I want to return to. Just out here in the woods, peace and quiet. But anyway, 